What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and since you've already seen my morning routine, this is basically what I do in the evening. I scroll through Instagram looking at pictures of coffee and cats, and sometimes an item catches my eyes. Now this sponsored ad popped up, and it kind of piqued my interest. When I go to their website, I notice that for one, it's a really engaging, beautifully designed website. They clearly have a solid design team behind this and a very significant ad spend considering I've seen these sponsored ads in every Instagram account that I run that has coffee in the name. Plus, if you Google them, you'll see they made the rounds with lots of really high name publications right around April 20th. But I was also very intrigued by the claims they made on their website mostly having to do with extraction. They say something about more yield per bean, they say up to 30% more, and they also say 20 times more concentrated than average coffee. So I figured I have to try this myself. And just a few short days later, this arrives on my doorstep. Now, immediately from popping it open, I can see that the marketing just doesn't end at the website. They clearly put this together very specifically. It's supposed to be a nice transition from the website to the real world Everything is very cohesive. The branding is on point, I have to say. Everything is very high quality, and the presentation of the bottle and this cool little tablespoon you get with it are great. Everything is super clean, very simple and elegant, and honestly, I like it. I have to say the design is on point. But before I dive into tasting the coffee, I do wanna talk about the extraction claims on their website. So one page says they get more yield per bean without over extracting. Another page says they do 30% more yield per bean. And then another page says it's 20 times more concentrated than traditional coffee, but then goes on to talk about how it's comparable to espresso. So what I'm gonna do is just test the TDS of this liquid and see what it comes out to. Now without their brew parameters, like the amount of coffee they put in and brew weight they put out, I can't say one way or the other whether their extraction claims are true, but in the three tests I did, it averaged out to 19.77% TDS. So if you were to plug that TDS number into your standard espresso or pour over recipes, you would get some pretty high extraction numbers. So a standard espresso at 18 grams in and 36 grams out would be extracted to 39.54%, and a standard pour over with 23 grams in and 400 grams out, you'll get an extraction percentage of 304.29%. So any way you put it, it's definitely a concentrated coffee. Which all begs the question, how is this product made? When I ordered the product, the website talked about the process of reverse gravitational extraction, but when I returned a few days later to create this video, all mentions of the process were wiped from the site and replaced with the following description. Removing any mention of reverse gravitational extraction, and now just calling it progressive enrichment process. But after some digging, I found where they described the process to a publication as basically making a large, upside-down espresso in slow motion. Excuse me, why? So basically they're grinding fine, they're pushing water up through a puck, and that's how they're achieving this high level of extraction, but otherwise lots of the other details are pretty fuzzy. And I promise we'll talk about taste here in a minute, but I do want to talk about this less environmental impact. And yeah, I'm sure they do compost their grounds and I'm sure that they do make some sustainable decisions, but maybe they should look more into this box design because just to get one bottle and one spoon this is how many pieces of cardboard that were used in that process. So I know cardboard is recyclable, but can we really trust that everyone's gonna recycle it? Do it! But now, let's make some drinks. Cue the montage. Now having tried all those drinks and using half a bottle of Jot, I can conclusively say that this coffee does taste good. 
According to their website, they use a blend of Central and South Americans, which makes sense because it has low acidity and carries a lot of those flavors that people love in coffee like caramel and chocolate. That being said, I think it does perform best in hot coffee beverages, and especially if you keep the ounces of water and milk lower. So I found in an eight ounce latte, the flavor of coffee really came through and it was very pleasant. And in a smaller Americano, like six ounces, it was just really nice. But as soon as I added more water or things like oat milk that had a different flavor to it, the flavor of the coffee just pretty much disappeared. Now it's pretty obvious that this product wasn't really designed for someone like me. And most likely if you're watching this channel and you're subscribed, hint, hint, it wasn't really designed for you. But you know, it was worth a try. It's kind of an interesting thing to do and quarantine's got me like, this is cute. <laughs> so here we are. A big thank you to my May Patreons, Ads, James B, David, Hamad, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Thomas B, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean, Joey, Thomas S, Noel, Spookus, Bound Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Nathan, Aiden, Jonathan, Claire, Steven, James K, Josh, Andrew, Ollie, Ninja Warrior Coffee, and Testing123. And of course, big thank you to the barista and barback tiers. If you have any questions on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow me on Instagram at Spermetheus, my blog at Spermetheus.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy. <laughs>